Hi guys, my name is Marcus. I am the founder of DroneServices.biz, Drones.Consulting, and DronesAI.Training. Now, some of you may have seen already my TEDx video uh, showcasing how to use flying robots and third-party AI applications to collect aerial data, and I work here closely in this nature reserve with my park rangers to protect and monitor regularly the habitat, both uh, fauna and flora. However, today I'd like to give you a quick demonstration of Spexi. Spexi is a Canadian company, is expanding its international operations, and what it does, it uses very cleverly a combination of small consumer drones plus the Spexi app to collect aerial data and then turn that aerial data into high resolution, um, uh, high profile digital resolution aerial images. Now the images that are being used are um, about 900 times better than satellite images and what's best is probably if you're a pilot, if you've got one of these drones and the drones available on the Spexi network at the moment are the DJI Mini 2, DJI Mini 3 and DJI Mini Pro, not the Mini 3 Pro, not the Mini 4 Pro yet, because the Mini 4 Pro hasn't got the software development kit available by the drone manufacturer, which is needed for the app to talk to the drone. In addition to that, what you need is not the new smart controller, but the old controller and a mobile phone uh, that can act and connect to this. Now, I'm recording my screen here. I would like to show you how this all works. And Hopefully, um, we get Spexy, we get the drone up and can collect all these Spexy drones. So let's start this up. And actually, um, what I'll do is I'll fly from the beginning because previously I uh, tried this mission and I want to do it completely so you get a good idea. So the drone is going up now to 80 meters. 80 meters is the predetermined mission hike. Now, in this particular area, because it's open space, nature reserve, I haven't got any particular challenges. So um, you can keep an eye from a safety perspective on the screen. But when I flew the first Spexigons, and you can see this, this hexagon on the screen here, which um, is made up out of either bay points um, or panorama shots. The one you can see on the screen here, seven panorama shots. Uh, that are done within this hexagon, or as Spexy call it, the, the Spexigon. So what the drone does now, it flies up to 8 meters. Once it's up autonomously, it goes to the middle point first. So you can see uh, the ages on the screen, that's my home location. And you can also see here what the drone gets to see. When I make this bigger, it's actually quite nice to use. So the drone then goes to that point, starts collecting uh, images all together, all these seven uh, uh, panoramas within a spexicon make up 119 images. And once it's collected those images, it comes back to you autonomously. You then can land it, you can upload the data to the spexy.com server through the explorer.spexy.com app, which is the web browser actually. So you have an app on the phone that controls the drone and you also have got a, a separate web portal that you can use to upload upload the image data that, that you have collected as part of our flying mission. Now you need to be mindful when you fly in more dense locations, particularly within Europe, because in Europe the transmission signal of these receivers is by law reduced. There's a CEE regulation that requires a lower transmission signal strength than you would have in the US. In the US you've got luck and end in Canada, I think as well. Lucky enough you've got FCC. So it's easier to fly there. If you fly in Europe and or in London and Spexi is planning to collect I think up to five hundred of these Spexigons somewhere in London, very densely populated airspace. Um, with a lot of buildings, a lot of concrete blocks, a lot of um, potential barriers of the signal, then you need to be very, very mindful where you're flying. And you need to be mindful that sometimes this may actually disconnect. So here's a little secret. I was flying this early on, about 20 meters down there at that bench, so not very far away from here. However, 
because there is quite big tree coverage, forest, the type of area, that impacts the signal strength of the transmitter and also of the drone. And because of that, we have to refilm the signal for you to make sure it is actually working. We're actually collecting all the data. Now, because I'm in an open space, it seems to be working actually pretty fine. I can see the pictures here. We are right over there right now, over uh, one of the uh, football playing fields. So the drone is still collecting that aerial data. There isn't much you as a pilot need to do other than keeping an eye on, seeing what's happening. I can see now we've got 45 pictures right now. So we're roughly halfway through of the 119. Uh, let the spexy con let, let the drone continue doing that. Um, it's a very simple process. Once you get used to the workflow that is required, and the workflow would roughly be first of all get the get the web portal, sign yourself up with spexy.com as one of their pilots, join their Discord channel, make sure you're in one of the locations where they actually open this up to collect the data. And if you look at their website and if you look at their socials, LinkedIn, I think those on Twitter. There's a lot of detailed information there where they've been operating already. Now, I've been lucky to do the first one outside of North America, uh, and I did that a few weeks ago up London. I think there's also on the Discord channel a sample of what that would look like. The aerial images you're getting out of this application and this way of collecting data is astounding. It's amazing. One important thing I mentioned earlier on when I first recorded this video, almost forgot it now it's very important if you use to drone videography or taking videos rather than photos what you will probably be uh, have been using in the past is ND filters now ND filters certainly don't work for photos but for the purpose of collecting air data for spexy.com please do not fly with an ND filter because what it does is uh, it reduces some of the visibility, it changes the image quality to some extent, and that is not what is wanted. So we want to get here the highest quality of images that are available. And I'm just checking, it's still doing this. So a typical mapping mission for something like this with 119 pictures, seven panoramas, takes roughly eight minutes, give and take. It depends on the type of the drone. As I said, you can use the Mini 2, Mini 3, Mini 3 Pro. Mini 3, I think, for the mapping purposes, is actually seemingly the best drone because what it does is it does it in uh, enough performance, enough speed, and the Mini 3 Pro even takes a little bit longer than the Mini 3. Mini 2, having said that, is the Mini 2, uh, the, the Mini 4K out now. Now, I'm not sure, you might want to check if the SDK is actually available for this or not. It might be by now, but definitely Mini 2, Mini 3, Mini 3 Pro, all of this works here. And in order to do that, you get the drone, get the controller with the drone, get a phone, ideally a second, you know, cheaper phone. It needs to be Android. I don't think that's available on iOS because again, the SDK it used to be open in iOS, uh, I think DJI, the manufacturers of the drone, have actually closed that down. So you need to be in an Android environment. And I'm just checking now, we've got 102 pictures, so we've got a little bit to go. Um, the uh, drone is now uh, collecting the last panorama of the Spexigon. You can see it's at 81 meters still. It's about 130 meters away from me. It does this bit by bit, it takes the pictures. And once it's completed that, uh, we've got 10 more to go, it goes automatically into return to home mode, returns to the location where I started, so roughly here. I will then do a hand um, a hand catch, hand landing, um, and show you how this works. And typically, this is one good way of doing it, if you're familiar with the drone and if you feel comfortable doing it. Uh, my recommendation would be don't just put the flat hand out, my recommendation would be use your fingers, go underneath the drone, it will sense you uh, and then grab the drone and hold it. So it's telling me now it's finished with all of this. So I can go back to the flight actually and I can say um, return home. And the way of doing that is you can either do it via the app or I just press the 
return to home button and you can see now it's going into return to home mode. Now I tried this out early on. Once you're in return to home mode, uh, you still can control the drone, so you still can do the yaw, so it's turning, you pitch and roll, and also you throttle your up and down, which is important when you want to do the hand landing. We're just waiting now, so it's still 20 meters away from me. It should come right above. Um, let's officially confirm that. Yep, it is right above up at, uh, it's actually come higher, now, 200 meters. That is the reason the settings for return to home in the DJI at 100 meters. So you need to be mindful of that, of your local flying environment. It's gradually coming down. I can hear it coming down as a 60 meters. Again, make sure when it does that, that uh, the space around you is clear. There isn't, there isn't any people nearby, which is fine here, but in an urban environment, you need to be a little bit more mindful of that. Um, the drone is coming down now, so let's keep an eye on it. So 20 meters, you might be able to hear it now also at the camera. And once it's coming down, I feel can do it by the telephone. Turn it down, turn it down. And if you are safety comes away from me, then I can touch it by hand and switch it off. And that's it. So the AL data has now been collected. What we need to do next is we need to take the SD card out because the data sits on here. We need to put it into either, uh, often what I do when I'm in the flying field, I've got a USB OTG connector here, put the SD card in. I use my other phone to upload the um, data from the panorama pictures we've just taken. And then in the meantime, I can I can unlock the Spexigon again for the drone and send it up if I wanted to, to do a waypoint mission for me. What I'll do is I'll record how the data is being uploaded to the portal. I'll probably do a time lapse because otherwise we'll be sitting there for ages just watching this. It doesn't really add anything. And then show you once the data is available on the Spexy.com portal. Now, hopefully you found that useful. Hopefully you will get the hands off your drone. You'll be able to sign yourself up with Spexy.com for the wait list. Become a local UK pilot and then get up to London, start flying. However, what I would say is also, because London is such a tightly controlled airspace, you need to keep in mind things like um, whether you're flying in a completely flight stick to, uh, zone, which is what I did, then you have to apply with the National Air Traffic Control. You need to apply with the Metropolitan Police Filming Unit, depending which uh, park and uh, local authority you're flying in, you will possibly need to approach them for a flying permission uh, that could also involve a fee so the last time I did this was quite expensive actually Spexy then paid for this so you need to be mindful of that we also need to keep an eye on weather and make sure you get a little bit of a flying window because you can see now it's getting a little bit breezy now we didn't have any issues here last time when I flew particular for the waypoint missions that can be a little bit tricky, so keep an, keep an eye on all of these factors. Very happy uh, to give you more advice through the Discord channel. You can find me there on the Marcus Pay and also DroneBiz, uh, DroneServices.biz on LinkedIn, Drone Consulting on LinkedIn and some of my other websites. And if you haven't seen it, I mentioned it at the beginning, I've done a TED talk about using flying robots for the protection of natural habitats and also to address some of the issues around climate change. I'll pop the link in the bottom of the description of this video and can, you can check that out as well. It uses different, it doesn't use the Spexy app, but the principle is exactly the same. You turn a consumer drone with a third party up into an autonomous flying robot. That's ultimately what this is, together with Spexy, and then send it up, collect the aerial data, and then send the AL data back to Spexy.com. You might ask now, okay, what's in it for me? Well, Spexy.com has got rewards for different types of pilots in different types of locations. So that's best to check out through their website. That also may change because they're moving from, I guess, private beta into public beta and then maybe also go full, you know, full release uh, application. Get yourself in early. It's definitely worthwhile doing. It's certainly a lot of fun and it's a great use of these drones for something else other than just photos and 
videography you're actually helping to improve the world, collect high definition imaging data and allowing people to get a view of spaces where otherwise they wouldn't be able to access or see you. Thank you so much. I'm sure to see you at the Discord channel. Happy and safe flying. Take care. Cheers. Bye.